Hey, what's up, everybody? So uh, I've been asked a couple times how to uh, to if I would show how I paint my my flags. Um, more specifically, I've had a couple people ask about how I paint my flags with the red and blue union, uh, and uh, just recently the the uh, torn and tattered flags that I've created. Um, so I'm just going to do a, a brief synopsis of what I do and I'll try to break it down for you as simple as possible. So I use V-Carve um, to do my design work uh, when it's not three-dimensional. So I, I don't, obviously you can't design 3D waves in V-Carve, you have to use Aspire for that. So that's what I use. I use Aspire for the 3D waves. But when I'm doing my vector files, uh, I use VCarve Pro, and uh, I use VCarve Pro because uh, when I'm planning a flag, I plan ahead as to how I'm going to finish it. So, for instance, uh, the split flag with the palmetto tree in it for South Carolina. Um, I had an idea in my head on the first flag that I did, and Basically, when I cut it, it was a little. It was it was trial and error as far as um, the finishing part of it. Uh, you can imagine with that design that uh, it'd be really intricate with the painting, the blue for the palmetto tree, and then the red and the blue for the the American flag. Um, so the biggest thing that I've always done is I've always tried to plan ahead on how I'm going to do it with minimal. Uh, I guess defects is the way that I would say it. Uh, I like my paint lines to be crisp. Uh, although all my stuff is is uh, I I do I do like to distress all my stuff. Um, I just love that worn look. I'm I'm big on that. In fact, if you look at this flag that I have on my wall, um, there's my. There's my flag there for my, my business. And then I've got a huge Betsy Ross flag right there. Um, it's got that worn weather look. Um, if you've been following my page at all for however long that I've been, uh, been running it, all my signs have a little bit of a weathered texture to it. Uh, I just love the, that, that feel. Anyhow. So my flags, I do the same thing with. Um, all of them get a little bit of a sanding or a heavy sanding, depending on how I, how I want to do it. But as far as my paint lines go, I want my paint to be crisp without getting on other sections of the flag that aren't to be painted that same color. So I'm going to show you a flag that I have on my machine currently. If you've been following uh, as of yesterday, you'll, you would have seen what I was working on. Um, and I'll give you an idea as to how I did it. I'll give you a step-by-step -step process as to my tool paths that I've chosen. And I will go into VCarve and show you um, how I designed it. It might be a little extra work as far as design work goes and even in the finishing aspect of it. But to me, for my personal preference, it's, it's the way I like to do it. Um, I like to use acrylic paint, uh, gloss specifically, because it's easy to sand off and leave that look that I look for. So here is the flag that I'm working on. It's still on the machine because I still have to do a little bit of work to it. Okay, so I still have to paint this blue. And so here's the, the field, here's the union. So when I paint this, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll cut the wave. I'll do the wavy pattern first. This has a subtle wave to it. And then what I'll do is before I paint anything, I'll come in and I will cut a square as to where the union's gonna be. That will tell me that all I have to do is paint that square blue up to that line. And then the rest is red. Now in this case, since I'm splitting it, I actually, I did the same thing on this. I did a very shallow pass that, that showed up on the, on the wavy pattern of the, the tear. So then all I had to do was paint 
the red up to it and then just leave that because this is gonna this got carved out anyways um, I do that for a reason because while the machine is is or why the the flag is on the machine before I cut the stars and the stripes it's really easy just to go in and paint that square blue and then this section red all red I just paint the whole thing red and then I come back after the fact and I will carve the stars and the stripes so that's what I did yesterday for this one now what I'm gonna do for this is I am going to take a fine paint uh, fine paintbrush and I will come in pretty close to this and I'll paint it blue I'm not gonna go all the way into it because like I said maybe I'm lazy I don't know but I really like the distressed look so I'm not looking for a clean and a, a clean and crisp paint line so I'm gonna leave a little bit of the the exposed wood in here and all this will be blue and I will go ahead and just paint this whole thing blue um, I'm not even gonna dare try to come in here and paint these little lines blue. I'll just paint the whole thing blue and then I will come afterwards with a sander and I'll sand all the blue off the raised uh, this is oak so if you've worked with oak before you know that red oak especially um, when you paint the paint will fill in the the grain the grains very tight on this and you will you will fill in spots that you don't necessarily want and if you sand too much you will sand out the detail so you do have to plan for that but I like to use oak because I like the weathered look that it gets when you do some of the sanding so what I'll do after I paint this and all this is painted and I cut out the flag I will take my this little guy here this is what I like to use the most of because it doesn't take too much off this is 220 grit and I will just sand along the waves and as I'm sanding along the waves oak with acrylic paint and I use acrylic paint for a reason because it's water based it will pull up the grain well all the sanding is going to remove that and it will expose some of that I do that for a reason but I will heavily sand this flag because I want it to be a worn look it doesn't look like it now but in the end it will so the other thing that I like to use is a chemical sorry my workshop is a complete mess I've been so busy like everyone else I like to use this stuff Ferrothane aged wood accelerator. It's it's a chemical reaction uh, similar to steel wool and vinegar, and I just rub it after I sand everything. I will I'll go over the raw wood and everything that's been sanded, and it'll it'll age it almost like a an old barn wood. Um, that's basically it. Uh, like I said, the process might take somebody longer than what they want to spend on it. But for me, this is more about art and what I'm looking for than it is about uh, being super fast with it. Um, I, it. This is a business for me as well, but that's what makes me uh, drive to be a little more unique than everybody else. So anyhow, I know this video is going to be long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Hope that helps. All right, so I just realized that I didn't go over the V-carve part of it. So I'm gonna go over that real quick. So the first thing that you're gonna see is you'll see the vector file here and you'll see that it's sitting on top of an STL model. Uh, that is my model number four, I believe it is. And uh, this is just an STL file that I, or a uh, SVG file that I created. Um, so when I'm doing my flags, as I talked about, the union I will cut first after I've done the wavy pattern um, so I'll show you that toolpath uh, if you look it should be right here yeah you can see the arrows so I will cut that that's at like 0 0.06 or something like that that'll cut a shallow little groove on the wavy uh, pattern and then after that's cut I'll go in and paint it blue in this case I did a profile cut this profile number two I did a profile cut of the tear and I did um, profile cut inwards so it cut off the line a little bit that way whenever I did the final cut 
of cutting out this section, uh, that cut would be uh, removed. You wouldn't see it on the board. Uh, so once that's cut and that's cut, I paint this blue, I paint this red, and then I go in and I do the clearance pass for the star or for the stripes and then for this section. Um, in this case, I used a eighth inch ball nose bit because I really like the finish it gives when it goes over the waves and it, it uh, takes out a lot of the material. Um, so I'll, I do that and then I'll come back with a 60 degree V bit. That 60 degree V bit will be used to cut the stars at a 0 0.0625 depth because I don't want them too deep. Uh, when you're cutting stars on a wavy pattern, me personally, I like to keep them shallow. I keep them shallow because when you start cutting too deep on the stars, then they kind of look funny because the edge of the V bit kind of goes into the waves. And if you're doing a flag that's got um, exaggerated waves, then it kind of looks goofy. Um, this is a pocket tool path here. I pocket this out and I leave this raised. And then I come back with the 60 degree V bit and I cut that out. So what that looks like is come here. I'm going to reset the toolpaths and I will hit preview all toolpaths. I cut the waves with a quarter inch ball nose bit at a 7% step over. Did not do a roughing um, pass this time. I actually wanted to see how long it would take to do with the quarter inch ball nose and it took an hour to do the 3D wave. Uh, I do not have this wave set very steep. I think it's at um, 0.45 inches out of one inch where the base layer is at 0.55 and that that can be found in the modeling tab of vcarve so you can see there's that there's that there's the stars there's the stripes there's the pocket final detail and then a final profile cut to cut out the flag which oh I've got tabs so I can't do that so anyhow so that's basically um, that's basically it that's for the tools uh, I just like I said I do the union and the uh, the tear I do a shallow pass for that. It's not the it's not the final pass. I just do a shallow pass that way I can see where I'm going to paint my lines.